The Prophet وسلم, said, You shall be gathered on the day of judgment, barefooted, unclothed, and uncircumcised. Then he recited the verse from the Quran, Kama bada'na awwala khalqin nu'iduh, as we began the first creation, we will repeat it. Wa'dan alayna, that is a promise, binding on us. Inna kunna fa'ileen, indeed we will do it. And then he said, فَأَوَّلُ مَنْ يُكْسَى إِبْرَاهِيمُ The very first to be clothed on the day of judgment will be Ibrahim. Public humiliation exists in many forms. A criminal sentenced to this form of punishment could expect to be placed in a central public or open space so that his fellow citizens could easily witness the sentence. Head shaving can be a humiliating punishment prescribed in law, a stark example of which was the thousands of European women who had their heads shaved in front of cheering crowds in the wake of World War II, as punishment for associating with occupying Nazis during the war. Other societies employed public foot whipping as a humiliating punishment and is still executed in public in some countries till this day. Being the victim of a public shaming has the potential to ruin life, financially, emotionally, physically. In the most extreme cases of modern online harassment, we have seen the worst case repercussions over and over again, adults losing their livelihoods and young people taking their own lives. If, however, we wish to raise the bar of a publicly disgracing experience to its highest level, what would it look like? According to the Quran, the ultimate experience of such is on the day of reckoning in front of the honorable angels the jinn, every generation of humans who lived, and above all, the Almighty King Himself, Allah. Since many shall experience this, countless people in fact, the Quran has understandably given a lot of attention to the topic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said describing the state of those who had rejected the Day of Judgment, how they will appear on that day. وَلَوْ تَرَىٰ إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ نَاكِسُوا رُؤُوسِهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ If only you could see the criminals hanging their heads before their Lord, crying, رَبَّنَا أَبِصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا أَوَ لُودْ We have now seen and heard. فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا So send us back and we will do good. إِنَّا مُقِنُونَ We truly have faith now. Truly there is no shame more intense than meeting Allah on the day of judgment as a rejecter of faith. Abdullah ibn Umar narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُدْنَ الْمُؤْمِنُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ حَتَّى يَضَعَ عَلَيْهِ كَنَفَهِ The believer will be brought near to his Lord on the day of resurrection till he places his veil upon him. Then Allah will hold him to task for his sins, saying to him, أَتَعْرِفُ ذَنْبَ كَذَا هَلْ تَعْرِفُ كَذَا do you recognize such and such sin? And he will respond, My Lord, I do. Allah will then say to him, I had indeed concealed them for you in the life of this world, and today I shall forgive them. And then he is given his book of good deeds. But as for the non-believer and hypocrite, the Prophet Muhammad said, A public announcement will be made about them before all of creation, proclaiming, Those are the ones who told a lie about Allah. Imagine the disgrace of a young man or woman who has their mother, father, or both complaining of them before Allah. Their right of being obeyed and cared for was mentioned side by side in the Quran with Allah's right of being singled out in worship. And now here they are on the day of reckoning, arguing a case against their child. Imagine the disgrace of the killer who had taken a life unjustly. As he is dragged by his victim towards Allah and demanding retribution, the Prophet ﷺ said, يَجِيءُ الْمَقْتُولُ بِالْقَاتِلِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ نَاصِيَتُهُ وَرَأْسُهُ بِيَدِهِ وَأَوْدَاجُهُ تَشْخُبُ دَمَا On the day of judgment, the murdered will come with the murderer's forelock and head in his hand, and his jugular vein flows with blood, saying, O oh my Lord, ask him why he killed me, till they draw near the throne of Allah. Imagine the disgrace of a person who used to hear the invitation to pray in life today, but stubbornly refused, as he finds himself physically unable to prostrate on the day of reckoning before Allah, standing upright as his back stiffens as if it was a single bone. Allah said, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقُ The day the shin will be laid bare. وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ And they are invited to prostrate. فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ But they will not be able to. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ تَرْحَقُهُمْ ذِلَّةً Their eyes downcast, totally covered with disgrace. وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ For they were called to prostrate in the world when they were fully capable, but they chose not to. Imagine the shame of a person whose mouth is sealed by Allah. Whilst his limbs are inspired to speak loud and clear words against him, Allah said, وَيَوْمَ يُحْشَرُ أَعْدَاءُ اللَّهِ إِلَى النَّارِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ The day when the enemies of Allah will be gathered for the fire, all driven in ranks, حَتَّى إِذَا مَا جَاءُوهَا Until when they reach it, 
شهد عليهم سمعهم وأبصارهم وجلودهم بما كانوا يعملون. Their hearing, eyes, and their skins will testify against them of what they used to do. Imagine the shame of he who presents Allah with a lifetime's worth of so-called good deeds only to be shocked when they are turned down. Because they were not for Allah. Instead, they were contaminated with showing off, boasting, and self-centeredness. Despite his alleged Islamic activism, his incessant pleas for subscriptions were present in almost every appearance of his, having convinced himself that he was championing the cause of Islam, whilst in reality championing his own personal cause all along. How will they fare as they stand face to face with the King Allah who had always come second place in their intentions and lives? Where they will be told on the day of judgment, اذهبوا إلى الذين كنتم تراؤون في الدنيا Go to those for whom you had shown off for in the world. فانظروا هل تجدون عندهم جزاء and see if you find any reward with them. Imagine the state of the user of interest before Allah. He had made a living through it. and refused to take notice of Allah's warning in the Qur'an, which said, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا If you do not desist from usury, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Then take notice of war against you from Allah and His Messenger. Picture his disgrace on the day of reckoning when he is told to pick up his weapons and go to war with Allah. When all is said and done, the ultimate disgrace boils down to one matter, being driven to hell at the command of Allah. For this reason, Part of the believer's dua as detailed by the Qur'an is رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ مَنْ تُدِخِلِ النَّارَ فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْتَهُ Our Lord, indeed, whoever you admit to the fire, you have certainly disgraced him. To leave it at this, however, would be an unjust portrayal of the Day of Judgment. Yes, it will certainly expose and disgrace many people, but it will also elevate and honor many others. Allah said, يَوْمَ لَا يُخْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيَّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ On the day Allah will not disgrace the Prophet or the believers with him, نورهم يسعى بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم Their light will shine ahead of them and to their right. يقولون ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا They will say our Lord perfect our light for us. Forgive us. إنك على كل شيء قدير You are truly most capable of everything. In extreme contrast to the disgraced ones described earlier. Not too far from them is a completely different scene. Despite all being on the same plane of resurrection, one of immense delight, joyous laughter and honoring, I introduce to you the righteous believers. They will find the moment they emerge from their graves beautiful angels in their reception, who offer them the most reassuring of encouragement. They will find vehicles of the hereafter awaiting them, sparing them from walking on this long day. They will be clothed whilst the majority of humanity will walk nude. They will recline on thrones of light. They will be granted radiant appearances. They will be granted on this day of bleak darkness, light that shines ahead of them and on their right. They will be taken to shade, the only available shade provided by Allah's throne. They will, as is the case with martyrs, bleed with a musk-like fragrance to publicize their wounds, which they sustain in Allah's path. They will be serene, at complete peace, as the majority of people endure the full force of the supreme horror of the Day of Judgment. They will be made to perceive the Day of Judgment far shorter than it actually is, as short as part of a day. Like the time it takes the sun to set in the late afternoon, despite the day of judgment lasting a grueling 50,000 years. So, how does one go about protecting himself herself from the prospect of the ultimate disgrace before Allah, His angels, prophets, and the whole of humanity? We introduce this recording with a narration that describes the honored state of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam on the day of reckoning, being the first of humanity who shall be clothed. Therefore, it seems apt to suggest ways forward using his biography. The first recommendation, a dua that Ibrahim made. The higher one ascends the ladder of knowledge and righteousness, the more the dread of being disgraced on the day of reckoning will feature in one's dua. Seeing that Prophet Ibrahim is among those at the very top of this ladder, it's no surprise that it featured in his dua as captured by the Quran. He would say, Rabbi habili hukman wa alhiqni bil salihin. My Lord, grant me authority and join me with the righteous. Waj'alli lisana sadiqin fil akhirin and grant me reputation of honor among later generations. Waj'alni min warathati jannatin na'im and place me among the inheritors of the garden of pleasure. And then he would say, Wa la tukhzini yawma yub'athun and do not disgrace me on the day of resurrection. Yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun the day when there will not benefit anyone wealth or children. Illa man atallaha bi qalbi but only one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. So commit those words to memory and bring them to the table on a nightly basis when you raise your hands to Allah in dua. A second recommendation from the life of Ibrahim, advice that he gave. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ibrahim alayhi salam will encounter his father Azar on the day of judgment whose face will be dark and covered with dust. Ibrahim will say to him, Alam aqul laka la ta'asini. Did I not tell you my father to not disobey me? And his father will say to him, Today I will not disobey you. Ibrahim will then call upon Allah and he will say, My Lord, you promised me to not disgrace me on this day of resurrection. And so what can be more disgraceful than this state of my father? And Allah will say to Ibrahim, I have forbidden paradise for the disbelievers. Then it will be said to Ibrahim, O Ibrahim, what is underneath your feet? And he will look and he will see a hyena, blood stained, which will be caught by the legs and thrown into the fire. Of course, that will be his father. The key word in this narration is, did I not tell you to not disobey me? As this was the core message of each and every prophet to his community, fear Allah and obey me. Or in other words, be a practicing Muslim whose life is governed by revelation. There is no better way of securing oneself from the disgrace of that day and guaranteeing a resurrection of honor, a standing of ease, a waiting of dignity, and a prompt entry to paradise than by simply being a good Muslim. All of what has been mentioned so far should resonate with us more than anyone else. There is no generation in history that understands what it means to be publicly humiliated like we do. Just a generation ago, an embarrassing gaffe might have been written up in the local paper or gossiped about over backyard fences until it was old news. But today things are different. The internet has eternal life and boundless reach, and victims of a digital disaster must learn to live forever with the implications of that high-tech tattoo. The digital age has made shaming today very different to any shaming of the past. But as we have just discovered the shaming of tomorrow, the day of reckoning in what will be the eternal age will silence all what was before it. The takeaway message is concise. Hold Islam in a high regard today and you will be held in a similar regard tomorrow.